For some of us, sudden death may be only around the corner. The tragedy is that death, through heart attack or other accident, often strikes down those with hearts too good to die, like this man. For him, what is done in the next four minutes may determine whether he lives or dies. Your two hands and mouth may be the means of giving someone another chance to live. In any accident, such as drowning, suffocation, gas poisoning, in heart attack, overdose of drugs, or electric shock, one of two things may have happened. Breathing may have stopped while the heart still beats, or both breathing and heartbeat may have stopped. If such is the case, death is only a matter of minutes unless immediate and decisive action can be taken. That is where you come in. Often the human heart that suddenly stops needs only a little manual assistance to start up again. Even if it won't start right away, manual heart pressure will usually keep the blood circulating and the heart and brain alive until a physician can take over. But simultaneous direct breathing is an absolute necessity, for without oxygen, the brain has only four minutes to live. Whatever the cause of heart stoppage, in this case, heart attack, the rescuer is faced with the same problem. He must take over the work of a heart and lungs that have stopped functioning. If possible, send at once for medical aid. Then make sure the victim is on his back, on a rigid surface, such as ground or floor. Be sure that throat and windpipe are free of foreign objects. Tilt the victim's head back as far as you can and lift up on his chin. Taking deep breaths, blow quickly five or six times into his nose. This is called mouth-to-nose breathing. Hold the victim's mouth closed, by continuing pressure on the jaw. Watch the patient's chest to be sure that it is rising when you blow air in. If it isn't, either the victim's head isn't in the proper position, or the nose or throat needs to be cleared of some obstruction. Mouth-to-mouth, -mouth in place of mouth-to-nose breathing, can be demonstrated by your physician. The next step will be to determine whether the heart has stopped. Since in an emergency such as this, the wrist pulse may be too weak to detect, it is useful to know the location of the neck pulse just alongside the Adam's apple. If you feel no pulsations, or if the pupils do not contract when the eyelid is raised, blood circulation must be started at once. First, quickly locate the subject's breastbone by feeling for the notch at the upper end, and then the flexible cartilage at the lower end. Now, place the heel of one hand, with the other hand on top of it, over the lower third of the breastbone. Press straight down hard, using the weight of your upper body, so that the chest moves in about an inch and a half in the adult. On an actual victim, as you will see shortly, the downward stroke is much more forceful than is seen here. Repeat this at least once a second. A second is about the length of time it takes to say 1001. So you can pace yourself by counting 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and so on. The fingers must be parallel to the ribs, but must not touch them at any time. If the hands or fingers are not correctly placed, they may break ribs or damage internal organs. 
Here, in an actual hospital resuscitation, you can see that the correct amount of force used on the victim is much greater than is demonstrated in other portions of this film. Your physician can provide additional instruction in delivering the right amount of pressure. If you can feel a pulse when you pause in your compression, it means the heart has resumed beating by itself. But you must keep a close watch on the victim's pulses and pupil until medical help arrives. If the blood is circulating, the pupil contracts when the eyelid is raised. Otherwise, it remains wide open like this. Often, the heart will start and then stop again without warning, and it will be necessary to resume compression. Until someone else can take over direct breathing, you will have to alternate between that and manual heart pressure, giving five or six breaths for every 30 seconds of compression. As soon as another person can be instructed, he or she can take over direct breathing for you at the rate of 12 or 14 breaths each minute. Fatigue can make you forget that fingers must be kept away from the ribs. Check their position frequently. When the ambulance arrives, manual heart compression and direct breathing must be kept up every possible moment while the patient is carried to the ambulance and during his trip to the hospital. Once there, physicians will take over resuscitative procedures. In women, the procedure for manual compression and direct breathing is identical to that for men. The victim's breastbone is located by feeling for the notch at the upper end and the cartilage at its lower end. The heel of one hand with the other on top of it is placed over the lower third of the breastbone. The fingers must be parallel to the ribs but must not touch them at any time. Children from one to ten years of age require a faster rate of compression applied with one hand only since their rib cage is very flexible. Excessive pressure must be avoided to prevent internal injuries, particularly in infants. Here, the compression applied by the fingertips alone is enough to maintain circulation. In summing up, remember that at all times, two things are necessary to life, air and circulating blood. One without the other is useless air by direct breathing if the victim is not breathing for himself, circulation by manual heart compression if the heart has stopped, air first, circulation next. Never forget these two cardinal principles. At the scene where a probable heart stoppage has occurred, the first thing to do is place the victim on his back on a firm surface. If the victim is not breathing, Begin direct breathing with five or six quick, deep breaths. Feel for his wrist and neck pulses. And check his pupil to see whether it contracts when the eye is opened. If there is no sign of heartbeat, begin manual heart compression by placing the heel of one hand, fingers parallel to the ribs, on the lower breastbone with the other hand on top. Apply your weight firmly and vigorously at least once a second. Do not permit your fingers to touch the victim's chest. If you are alone, stop every half minute to give five or six breaths. If another person is present, have him breathe for the victim 12 to 14 times a minute. Continue these procedures on the ground and in the ambulance until the heartbeat has definitely returned and the victim has unmistakably resumed breathing or a physician has taken over. Memorize and practice these two simple life-saving procedures. Don't hesitate to ask questions of a physician as often as necessary. Your two hands and mouth may give a human being another chance to live.